want theoretically. That should have dropped down now. <laughs> Good morning, my beautiful people. Uh, today I'm gonna uh, put these red bricks in permanently, so I'm gonna mix some sand and cement and uh, get them in. The eagle eared amongst you uh, may have seen in my last video that my the guy that's laying the granite uh, uh, said to me, can you leave 35 millimeter gap here for it? And in yesterday's video, <laughs> twice I said 35 centimeters. Clearly that's a bit too much of a big gap. So it's 35 mil. I have got up this morning and thought, this is a relatively easy job, but I think I ought to stop saying that now because <laughs> clearly I thought the tiles would be easy. And uh, I have to admit that the whole tiling was a complete nightmare for me. I mean, I've got them in, they look good, and they do look good. But the whole project to lay six tiles, which I thought were going to be absolutely dead easy, but <laughs> it just wasn't. So, yeah, we'll get on with this today. So I've got most of them in. Um, I think as you'll have seen from me laying them. Um, I have used a spirit level, but it's impossible to get them absolutely level because these bricks are so, so uneven. But overall, I think it's level. And it doesn't need to be spot on because the piece of granite that will be sat on top of here will be leveled off with whatever they put on here to stick it to the uh, to stick it to the granite. So I think I've just got another six to, uh, a six to lay and then that's another job done. Now the chap that's uh, fitting the granite said he, he needs about 35. Luckily, I thought I'll just give him a call to see if he can work, work with 50 mil. And he's actually said he can't. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to pack it up a bit more. So I'm gonna use the, the wood form I use for the concrete slab. I'm going to fasten it onto here, giving me 10 mil, and then I'm going to fill all the top of these bricks with 10 mil of mortar and let that go off because it'll be here in a couple of days. So thankfully I made that phone call and, uh, and found that out because uh, the last thing that I wanted is him turning up and having too big a gap and him not being able to fit it. So. I'm sure there's a magic formula to work out how much mortar you actually need, but <laughs> I never mix enough or I mix far too much, as you saw with the tile adhesive. Uh, so I'm gonna have to uh, mix some more. If anybody knows what that magic formula is, by the way, how I could work out how much mortar I would need for all these bricks, can you let me know? Now, I bet there's some builders out there watching this screaming at the screen telling me I'm, uh, there's a much better way to do it. Apologies if, you, if you're one of them builders. I don't lay bricks. <laughs> I've never laid bricks, so this is all, all pretty new to me. I don't mind admitting that I'm a little bit stuck. And I'm quite sure this should be really simple. Nothing's ever simple as we've established. That this is the sleeve that goes on top of the roof over the chimney or the flue. So I cut this to the correct diameter and I slide it over the flue and I rest that on the roof, put some seal on and screw it down. So what I've got to do is I've got to cut a square hole up there as big as I can because I do need clearance from the flue to this wood. But this is where I'm a bit stuck. <laughs> so after many mistakes and <laughs> quite a lot of drawing, I decided I think the best way to do it was to draw, just draw a template out on the, uh, on the, uh, rubber seal that goes on top of the roof from there 
there to there, there to there, there to there, and make that square and put it up there. I think that was the best way to do it. Obviously, find the centre, get that in the centre. So that's what I've done. So, <laughs> so the past, I don't know, two hours I've been trying to get, <laughs> trying to get a square by drawing the circles, measuring, but in the end, I plump for the version of uh, creating a template, which is probably what I should have done in the first place. So, and the next job I've, not, I've got to do is I've got to drill a hole up through there and then cut that square, get this on top, seal it, screw it down and get my flu in. So that's the job I'm going to attempt to do next. So I've marked out my square here that I need to cut out and this is what will sit on top of here. There'll be a sealant under here and some screws through it. And then my flu will obviously come up here. So I'm going to have to cut a hole in the roof, which is another one of them tasks that makes me feel a little bit nervous. <laughs> But I've got to do it. I'm just very, very nervous. of blood sweat and tears I've got to the stage where I've got heat coming out of this little hole that I've built it's just bizarre it's just it's just bizarre I, I have to say I am a little bit emotional that with my past history of anything DIY anything I've built this I've got a flame in there, it's going up through a wooden roof that's a huge big 25 square meter structure. It's got a rubber roof and a proper chimney. And I've got a fire, a fire roaring in this, <laughs> in this little hole. It's, it's just bizarre, it's just bizarre. I mean, this is only a small fire and it is quite warm. It's just a curing fire. You can you can cure it at two stages. You can cure it before you get your fire blanket on, fire blanket and render on the outside, which I haven't I haven't got yet. <clears throat> I'm still waiting for the the granite to go on the front. So I'm going to cure what I've done so far, and then do some more cure fires uh, when the render's on. But um, I've got a fire <laughs> I've got a fire in in an oven that I've built. I have to say I'm extremely chuffed chuffed. Thanks for watching.